Today, I have the pleasure of Jillian Whitney. She is a LinkedIn video coach and uh, she runs a company called Easy Peasy. Video Easy Peasy. Video Easy Peasy. Okay. <laughs> I had the pleasure of doing a LinkedIn Live with Jillian, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring her on is that video is one of the most discoverable videos that I have out there. So she's an expert in visibility. She is an expert in how you present yourself visually, and she's just a fun person to, to talk to. So she is actually Canadian. You actually have three different citizenships, don't you? Four? Four? <laughs> what are all four? Okay. Born in Canada. So Canadian, Canadian born abroad. No, not Canadian, Canadian born. Sorry. So Canadian, uh, British born abroad. Cause both my parents were British. And then I found out when I grew up that made me a citizen. So I have the passport to prove it. I'm also an American. So I'm an American citizen. I live in Las Vegas, Nevada in the United States. And I am Israeli. So I lived in Israel during the pandemic and then came back. Not a good time to move abroad in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. So I decided to come back home and help out with family. So back in the United States and maybe back to Britain soon. So that's the goal. Oh, interesting. I didn't know all of those details. I was actually looking at your LinkedIn profile and I realized we actually went to the same university. So did oh you go to work name? <laughs> Yes, I went what to did Glendon. You yeah, I went to Glendon. So yeah, if you looked at our LinkedIn profiles, compare them. We both have York University showing. So there's no Oh, problem. that's so funny. That's so funny. I did not know that. Yeah, exactly. I didn't know that until I looked this morning. So one of the topics I wanted to talk to you about, Jillian, is really just what are the best practices when you're presenting yourself on video? And just so you know, we are actually recording this as the first video version. I am actually going to be posting this on YouTube. I couldn't have Jillian on here and not actually take advantage of doing the video. So there's that. <laughs> so <laughs> I even brushed home. my hair. I yeah, even brushed exactly. My hair. That's right. I even put on makeup. Ooh. <laughs> So what are the best practices that you start with when you're first working with a, an individual? Start with what you have. That's the most important thing. I think people can get really hung up on the tech, thinking they have to go out and buy fancy equipment and have all these things. When reality, just the phone, the phone that you have, that's good enough. If you're not a phone person, that's okay. Neither of them use desktop, using your webcam, using Zoom. That is a wonderful way to make videos. So just start with the tools that you already have and keep it easy peasy because that's my theme. Always making video easy peasy. So the things that I recommend is you want to have good sound. So you want to have a microphone. Microphone's really good. You want to have stable video. So you want your, you want a tripod. There's nothing... I find more annoying than watching shaky cam and having somebody walk down the street with a video. That'd be pretty silly with a laptop, but people do it all the time with their phone. And it's like, you're all over the place. So you want the tripod with the webcam. Usually our built-in computer camera is not quite good enough. So I really recommend a good webcam and they're under a hundred dollars now. They're about 50 bucks. And then light, light is so important, light. So I have right now the natural light of the window, always face the window, don't have the window behind you because then you look like you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> because what happens is your camera focuses on your focuses on the light, which puts you in darkness. So that's why it's so important. So you want to look into the light, a window will do a ring lights, nice adds in makes this not look so wrinkly, <laughs> yeah, it gets out all the flaws. And that's about it. And then just be aware of your background, you want to make sure that you don't have, you know, I don't know, clutter and laundry and all that sort of stuff in your background. So those are your main things. And also too, when you're on a interview like this, you want to wear those headphones. So, you know, that can help because I know a lot with LinkedIn lives, you can get a lot of feedback with the two people talking. So those are the basic things. Sounds good. I love the beautiful flowers and the counter in the background there. Thank you. <clears throat> And I had team. my husband install wallpaper. So I have a dedicated background that this is seamless for everything that I do. And I just have a ring light right now. In terms of headphones, I'm deaf in one ear. So I actually find headphones wow. challenging, even though mm. I did do one podcast where he insisted that I have wear headphones and I'm like, okay, this isn't going to work that well. Yeah. Interesting. That's good to know. And 
that actually brings up another point of always make sure that your videos are inclusive for all your different viewers. So, you know, whether you're talking about something, don't assume that people can even see your videos sometimes. So describe what's on the screen, describe what, you know, if you're doing a presentation and you're showing things, make sure that you're recording for the ear and the eye, because we just don't know what people's disabilities are. And then of course, also too, I'm a huge fan of captioning. It is an absolute must. And again, if you use Zoom, you can get those captions and use them. So there's just no excuse anymore not to do captioning. There's so many free tools out there. Yeah. And it's not actually even just a disability thing either. It depends on environment, right? So I used to work in call centers. I couldn't listen to the videos because I was busy actually doing work. And so just in between calls, I'd be able to watch something, but I would read the captions because... Hmm. Again, that, that whole thing with the, the earphones, it just didn't exactly. work because I had to have the earphone, the headset on for work calls. So I couldn't be switching everything. <laughs> exactly. And sometimes you you could be in a library, you could be in a doctor's office. I've taken some courses and sometimes I like to do my courses, like when I'm in bed and I like to watch and my husband's already asleep and I don't want to sit there re- wearing headphones in my bed. So I just watch with the captions. And so that works for me. Captions are so important for so many different reasons. Yeah, no, exactly. I love captions. And honestly, my, my kids even use them when we're watching TV. And it's, I think it improved their reading. So there's a lot of educational reasons to do it as well, too. So you mentioned courses. So that's definitely Love it. part of it. When we're work, looking at the future of work and hybrid remote, because that's my thing, there's a lot of opportunity for people who are learning how to use video in the workplace, right? So we're not necessarily working synchronously. We're not necessarily in the same location. We're not even necessarily in the same continent, never mind the actual office. So what are some of the things that you recommend for working hybrid, for example, or remote completely to, to emphasize your brand, to, to increase that visibility and really just streamline how people interact? Well, learn to use video as a communication tool. It's not always just about showing who you are and being an influencer or anything like that. We don't always have to be TikTok and entertainment and all those type of things. You have to look at video as a communication tool. And literally, I can tell you from the day that I, like from the moment I wake up in the morning to when I go to bed, I'm using some form of video. And for instance, I have a friend who lives in Belgium. And we send videos back and forth on WhatsApp. We're on totally different time zones. So I send her a video. She sends me a video. We say good morning. We wake up and we each have our lovely little videos. And it could be we're out for a walk or I'm making my coffee, those type of things. And it's really great because that's a way to get comfortable with being on video. Just get used to picking up your phone and speaking to somebody as if it's a friend, because then when you go to the workplace and you have to send somebody a video, you can do that. And I, by trade, I was a tech writer before I even got into video. So if I go back through my whole workplace scenario, I was a tech place, tech writer. I was a computer trainer. And if I had video at that time, it would have made my life so much easier because I was making SOPs, standard operating procedures, and everything was typed in Word and having to type everything. People would much rather have a little video that says, hey, here's how we upload photos for the website, or here's how we send this to our clients. Or if you think about onboarding or getting to know your staff, these are all ways that you can incorporate video into the workplace. And some of the things that I'd love to see is if you went to a business and you saw the, here's the team, let me click on their pictures and get to know them. Just a little intro video. So I know, Hey, here's Jane. She works in accounting or here's Sue. She's in charge of our Q and a quality assurance, that sort of thing. So these are ways that you can incorporate it. But I can tell you coming from a document management background and technical writing background and computer training, the more SOPs that involve video and short 
things or chaptered videos that show, okay, if you're going to do the company newsletter, you have to do this and this. Chapter it out so that if I remember how to do this part, I can skip to what I want because that's what we want, consumable video that we can just get what we want. So searchable and consumable. Yeah, no, definitely. And that's great for synchronous work too. And you mentioned knowledge management. One of the best practices out there is, do you have a single source of truth? So GitLab is one of the leaders in that. And so basically you can create like a manual with standard operating procedures, like you mentioned, for everything that the company does. And then you have one person who's responsible for keeping that updated. But video would be great because you can share your screen you can yes. talk through it, demonstrate what you're really teaching, and then make sure that keeps up to date. And that way, if you do actually encounter turnover or the great resignation or quit quitting or quiet quitting or whatever type of quitting is going on, you have captured that knowledge and it's going yes. to benefit the organization, right? So, yes. Yes. And that idea of an interactive org chart with video, that would be cool. It's brilliant. Oh, cool. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And I've often thought if we even just made the shift to something like LinkedIn, and I talk about what would I love as a video person for LinkedIn, I would love a choose your own adventure on my profile that Ooh. you could come to. Does that now sound fun? Yeah. And you could go to my profile and it's like, what do you want to know about Jillian? Maybe I have an intro like I do on my regular LinkedIn, but it's get to know Jillian and you could choose your own adventure. You might say, what are some of her career things? Because maybe you're a headhunter and you want to know, maybe I could you know, talk Jillian into having a job. So you might want to know what's my work background, or you might want to know, she says she's got four passports. Let's find out how does she have four citizenships? So I talk about that. Or maybe what are the services she private provides? All these different things could be about me, but choose your own adventure and you learn what you want to learn. And I think that's the kind of thing that will be coming to video, could work in the workplace, can work on social media, just ways that we can get to know people at the speed we want to. That personalization really of experience, you're choosing what you want to engage with. Yes. Yeah, I think that's really cool. So you've mentioned a couple of different software things here. Are there best for the future of work? What would you like to see? Like you mentioned what you would like to see for LinkedIn, but in the, like the workspace, what kind of software do you recommend or do you see a future for? Loom. <laughs> Loom is my favorite one out of everything because Loom has not only for someone like me, who's a solopreneur, Loom has a team option so that you can have a team library of all your videos housed in one place, because that's always the biggest thing. You make a video and then where does it live? Where does it, where's it going to reside? And I can tell you from a document management background, that's really important. And you don't necessarily always want to put everything on YouTube. So Loom is an excellent place because you can go, you could have a video library, you could have folders, you can search those folders. And here's the things that I like about Loom. Number one, you can make your videos private. You could make your videos password protected. You can allow for comments and reactions. So that elicits feedback when people watch videos. Maybe they're going to say, I don't understand this part. There was a leap in logic here between how do I download this and then how do I upload it here? So people can provide that kind of feedback. The other thing that I love about Loom is it is inclusive, meaning that it allows for the captions. And that's in that's now on their free plan, even for goodness sakes, you don't get better than that. And so it allows for closed captions that can be turned on and turned off. So at your discretion, you can decide to watch them or not. And you can also see a running transcript. So if you'd rather just read you can read and it's not always just at the bottom of the screen. You can have the searchable transcript on the side. You can search for things. So to me, that is a fabulous tool. You can screen share, you can webcam, you can do a combination of screen sharing and webcam. So you're that little circle bubble in the corner. And if you upload your pitcher and you're having a bad day, bad hair day, and you want to still make your video personalized, it will show your picture in that circle bubble. So that's good for people that 
they're hesitant. They don't want to be on camera. And we have to acknowledge that. And we have to honor that. And we can't always tell people, get over it. We can't. We have to allow that people are going to have different comfort levels. And so if I just could see your picture, Nola, that would at least make me realize it's Nola's video. That's her talking. And that's a wonderful way. So to me, Loom is excellent. And for any company that uses programs like Notion or any kind of database, a lot of those, I actually like to use Notion for a lot of different things. Loom videos can be embedded inside of Notion and then they play inside of Notion. So that to me is a great aha that we could have that for project management and have your videos in there. So you could do a lot of things with a program like Loom. Yeah, exactly. And that whole part of automation is really cool as well, too, because like you can link up with apps like Zapier and automate an awful lot that's happening with Notion as well, too. Exactly. Right? Oh, and one one extra thing about Loom is it even has a video trimmer inside. So if you mess up and you're like, oh, I don't know, you're at home and you're making your video for the CEO of a company. And now all of a sudden your dog starts barking and you're like, ah, I got to get that bit out. You can snip it out, which is really nice. All in the same program. And I think that's what we need is more video tools that allow us to do multiple things. Because if you make it too complicated, people just go, I'm not doing any of it. Yeah. I tried to upload a video to LinkedIn and that's where I learned there was actually a 15 minute cap mm. and they're like, trim it. And I'm like, oh, but I can't do that within LinkedIn. No, so I think that's no, great no, no. Another tool that I'll recommend is a, I don't actually have a paid program to this, but I do have the free version and it's a program called Video Ask. And one of the reasons why I like this tool, and I do recommend it to companies, is that it you can set up a series of questions, like a funnel. So I used it, I actually learned about it first when somebody asked me to do a review, a customer review for a product. And they sent me the video ask. And then what it did was it asked me a series of questions and I would answer by video. And then it would send me, and then I do that little segment and then it'd say, okay, you know, and it was very fun. It was very lighthearted and very fun. And it said, okay, so now we're going to, here's video question number two. And they'd ask me the question and they were asking me via video. So it's, hi, I'm Sally. I'm from the product department and yada. And then she'd say, so where did you use Zoom? And I think I was doing a review about Zoom. So it said, take a couple minutes to think about it. And when you're ready, hit the button. So I took a couple minutes to think about it, hit the button. And I made a, my little one minute segment. And then she asked me the next question. And this was all done at my own leisure and I took my time. And so it just prompted me from video to video. And then it strung it all together at the end for me. And then said, if you're happy with this, hit send, or I could have re-recorded. And I thought that was brilliant because I think a lot of times we don't know what to say on camera. So having that kind of video prompt really, I thought that was outside of the box. Ah, so it actually edited her out and it looks like a seamless video of you really just talking yes. about that product. Yes. And they also do, you can do holiday cards and holiday messages for people. And it's, I did that the first year that it came out and it looked like it was snowing and it was really <laughs> cute. And then I was able to send those video messages to people and then they had the option of whoever I sent them to as customers or friends or colleagues, whatever, they had the option of sending either a video message back or a text message or a voice message. So again, this is an awesome communication tool that companies could be using within the company and then also outbound with their customers as well. So I like tools like that. I think they're great. Yeah, that's cool. So can you embed it? If you had it at the company and you were using it, so you wanted to embed it into like Teams or Slack or something, could you download that I video? I think you can. I think you can. And you can add captions. You can add closed captions. You can do a lot of different things with it. And I actually learned about it first because somebody sent me a Christmas message on LinkedIn and they just popped it into a DM. And I was just like, 
oh my gosh. So I watched the video and then it said, do you want to reply with a video? And I was like, of course I would. I'm a video person. I have to. And that's when I learned about it. And I thought, well, that was cool. And they do have a free plan that you can get started and check it out. So I'm on the free plan, but I thought it was a really cool tool. That's cool. Yeah, no, I like that. And so much of communication that happens in the office, if you're not talking to somebody directly, synchronously, if it's messages, if it's emails, so much of the tone gets lost and yes. miscommunications can really happen because of an, a misinterpretation of an emoji or tone in general, right? Or all that, caps. Or all typing caps. It all. A lot of the digital hygiene issues that can sometimes happen. Video is a way that you can really make your intention clear just by yes. adding to them. Yes. Yes, I agree. I agree. And that's why I think live is good. Having live streams within companies is a good way to connect with your employees. And I had somebody recently in my LinkedIn live, and they were talking about how the CEO gets on and does lives. And that's a really good way for people to just see them in a different light more of a town hall approach. You can ask questions, those type of things. Those are, these are all good things to have. And we just have to focus on the fact that not people don't always have the expertise. So the more you can get into uh, programs that help us learn these skills. And we talked earlier about Toastmasters is one where I'm picking up hybrid uh, skills. These are all good things and are all making us much better at our businesses and in our jobs. Yeah, that Toastmaster story that you told me is actually a really great illustration of how intentional events really have to become in order to make sure that they stay inclusive for all of the attendees. Do you want to tell us about your Toastmasters experience? Absolutely. So I'm a huge fan of Toastmasters. I think everybody, anybody and everybody should belong to Toastmasters because you learn great communication skills and leadership skills. And uh, one of the interesting things is before the pandemic, Toastmasters meetings were always in person. And I know that when I lived back in Utah, I had to drive 45 minutes to get to my Toastmasters meetings and 45 minutes back. So I always used to say, can we do this via Zoom? And they were like, no. Then came the pandemic and every the world changed. And uh, my Toastmasters club is in Las Vegas and they have gone out of their way to you know, embrace Zoom during the pandemic. And then when we started meeting back in person again, they decided we would continue to stay a hybrid meeting environment. And what we do is we have the Zoomies, that's what we're called, any of us who dial into Zoom. And we have to spend a lot of time at our club and we have had to up-level our tech skills in order to do this. So what we do is we have, our meeting is held in a church. They donate the space to us. And we have a room with a large screen TV behind the uh, podium and the lectern, whatever. And that's where you would speak. And then in addition to that, we have two laptops, one forward facing and one facing the per the presenter so that they can see everybody on Zoom. And then the forward facing one is a camera that's picking up the room so that the Zoomies can see what's going on. In addition, we have a microphone, power strips all over the place, good Wi-Fi connection. And this takes a lot of time and dedication to set this up every time we meet, which is twice a month. What does the addition look like? The lighting is actually phenomenal and it's all ceiling lighting. So it's like a standard traditional classroom like you would have in an elementary school. So the lighting is really good and we can all pop in via Zoom and a lot of our guests to come on the Zoom call. So we usually have one or two of us and it seems that there's always somebody from the club that is the Zoom host. So for instance, I was there this week. I was welcoming our guests in the chat so that they felt welcome. I was able to take a PDF of our agenda for the meeting, put it in the chat as a document so that they could pull up and follow along because Toastmasters is very minute by minute organized with we're going to have speech one and then this evaluation and all these different things. But we also include 
all of our Zoomies by giving them roles in the meeting. Uh, guests are allowed to participate in the impromptu speaking, talk about why they're there at the meeting, give their comments at the end. So we do all that sort of interaction. And the Toastmaster always makes sure that we have heard everything. So if somebody does speak from their seat, which we try not to, we try to have everybody come to the front of the room, he or she will turn around and say, the timer said that so-and-so qualified. They always make sure we're filled in and we're not going, what? We can't hear. So that's really good. And then on top of that, we all have jobs and roles. So for instance, this week I was the educational moment. So I gave like a three minute speech about the meeting and what we were doing and Toastmasters in general. So it's an incredible environment. And for many of us, we don't have any other way to learn hybrid skills. This is the only place I've ever been that could be a training ground. And what I love about Toastmasters is it's a safe space, meaning you can come and give a speech and we're encouraged to address our audience in front of us in the room, but also those Zoomies as well. And if you get up and give your speech and you're nervous and all you do is talk to the people in front of you and you ignore the zoomies afterwards, we're going to give you that feedback. So this is great training for how do I live as part of this remote world, either being on zoom or being live. So hybrid works both ways. So it's a lot of work on the part of my club and I highly commend them. And this week in particular, we had a guest from Washington, D.C., who was in a legislative Toastmasters club that had heard that we were doing hybrid meetings and she attended to learn how we did it. And she walked away saying, this was amazing, put all her contact information and then we saved the chat and we made sure to save the chat. And then we had all that information. So nobody has to type stuff in. It's just a great way to go. So highly recommend that. Yeah, no, it's great. Are you familiar with Priya Parker? She wrote The no. Art of Gathering. So that's a great resource for this type of gathering. And she actually told a recent story in her newsletter about a wedding that was actually conducted in person, mm. but the majority of the family was actually around the world. And so they really had a hybrid event like that. And so guests were actually in the chat and they were sharing pictures and comments and chatting. And they had a cousin running the chat and just, they had intentionality about how those two audiences really interacted. And so there were specific moments where the people who were there in person would then interact with the people who were remote. And so everybody felt seen and heard and saving the chat. It's like a permanent record of what happened during the whole event. Who has that record of their wedding? I got married in 98. I don't have, I have a video. My father and I handed it off to a staff member and you have to watch it sideways, but that's it. Right. <laughs> That's like when, so one of my citizenships is being in Israel and I lived in Israel during the pandemic and we had a Passover Seder for our family. I'm Jewish. We had a Passover Seder and our Passover Seder was the United States, Canada, England, and Israel. So we had four countries. My sister hosted the Passover Seder. So she had several people live at her house and so she was able to show all the different things because satyrs are big things. You have that with your whole family. And of course, because we were in Israel, we had to get up at five o'clock in the morning to go to this. So the time zones with all these different things, but you know what? Sleep's overrated. We all showed up because it was important to be there for family and we recorded it. So we have that recording for all time that we, at a time when the world was so closed and so isolated, our family got together across all those different countries and all those different time zones and were able to participate in this Passover Seder and we'll save that memory forever. It was amazing. Yeah. And that's the beautiful thing is like, you can create that sense of belonging. You can create that togetherness really with some imagination, some intention, and you have that, right? So that's yeah. where I think people and organizations can really learn from this type of intentional gathering that's happening outside of the workplace. So yes. that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing <laughs> that memory. Anything else you see for the future of work that you think that video could really 
is, is there something that you would like to see? What if you had a magic wand, what would you create? I'd probably like to just say more people doing casual videos and just feedback that sometimes it could just be letting me know I did a good job, letting me know that, Hey, I see that you came in this weekend and you worked a little bit extra and you worked a little bit longer. Give me that kudo. Give me that kudo and more town halls, more think tanks. I remember I had the opportunity once to, as the Google goddess is one of my other hats that I wear. Cause I, I know <laughs> so much about Google and I had the opportunity once to go to Google's headquarters in Mountain View, Cal California. And one of the things that I really enjoyed learning about Google is that they do town halls with their employees, where they actually get to have access to the high level people and give their feedback, be heard. And I think more of those things with video, allowing for the remote workers to come in, allowing for the in-person people to come in. Those to me are things that I think more companies should embrace. Yes, it makes you more vulnerable. Yes, you don't know what people are going to ask. And sometimes you could be uncomfortable, but these are the kind of things that to me, video is the ultimate trust builder. And so I think we're going to see more of that in the future. And that would be my wish that people just embrace the raw stuff with video, be yourself, be genuine. We don't need polished videos that show all these fancy effects and those type of things. We don't need that. We just need people to turn on cameras and be human beings. And that to me would be my wish list. Okay, cool. No, I think that's great. I come from a background where we had those types of ask me anything and town halls and whatnot. And it changed once you had access to be able to ask those direct questions. Cause I remember attending them in person for years and you would leave and not feel that you learned much because you mm. couldn't target your questions. And once the pandemic hit and it all was converted to um, Teams or Zoom or whatever it was, and you had the opportunity to ask, it was interesting to watch the chat and see those answers be answered live. It was also illuminating to find out what they didn't answer. <laughs> Yes. And that's another thing I would like is, are you collecting the questions that are asked during those sessions and really fulfilling like a, an FAQ after the fact? And there might be things mm -hmm. that you're not necessarily comfortable answering on the fly, but the fact that you're uncomfortable doesn't mean that they shouldn't be answered, right? They should be addressed in some sort of way. Even if it's just to say, I understand you're interested in this. We can't disclose it at this time. At least you're acknowledging it. And I think that would be that what you just said is a great thing that companies could take some of those snippets and make snippets from their live town halls of here's some of the highlights so that if people don't want to sit and watch a whole hour, this is like, you got to make sure you at least saw this bit and just have those and have, and that way people can just bite size, morsel it out. Those are great ideas. Yeah, no, definitely it is. There's a lot of potential there. And that fuels a synchronous work too, right? So especially if you're global, especially if you're fighting time zones, you're not necessarily going to be able to attend all of those events that you need to. How can you catch up and how can you make sure that you're in the loop? And if you're making it available and you've got that transparency to make sure it's there, it's just going to add to the employee experience. So I, I agree. I think that's a great idea. So Anything else that you'd like to mention that we haven't covered? I think we've covered think a lot of ground. We've covered a lot of ground and I could talk forever. So I'll probably zip it up here because <laughs> I'll keep you too long. <laughs> this has been fun. Thank you. Yeah, I know. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. I'm just going to hit Zoom. Oh, and before I do that, actually, I'm going to mention that I'll make sure that you've got Jillian's LinkedIn and her YouTube. And so you can capture her videos for yourself. And we'll put that in the show notes. Super. All right, thank you. Perfect. Thanks.